Hello everyone, it's Rob's Guy. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Palantir and we're going to go over basically what happened today. I'm going to go over some option data, some just cover some news of what happened yesterday, and then go over some technical analysis. So before we get into it, I just want to emphasize I'm not a financial advisor. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you check out my channel and hit the subscribe button. Leave any comments, make sure you like the video. All right, so let's get into it. So yeah, today was kind of like a crappy day. <laughs> um, Everyone was excited over the contract that they got yesterday with Army contract about 800 and million plus contract and it was a pretty big contract and then I was even talking about it yesterday in my last video I was like oh look it's surging in the after hours but most likely what's going to happen is on the pre-market people are going to sell there's going to be profit takers if you're an option guy you know like good for you you're going to see those gains and that's kind of like what happened basically so it in the pre-market it, it jumped back down to like seven percent um in the pre-market and it wasn't initially around 14 percent and then basically like on market open it just started going down and then like well within like the first hour or so it just basically came back down to like only a couple cents uh search and then it ended up just basically just having only a 37 um cent search which is still i mean technically good it still ended up green it's, it's still above it went up 1.59 percent so I think a lot of people just took advantage of the, the whole contract news and the hype and usually it causes Palantir to surge in the pre-market and then everyone just like takes out um, or locks in the profits and everything. So that's basically what happens. So it's nothing new if you're if you're already a long-term investor in Palantir. This is somewhat expected. And but either way, you should be um, confident in your in your position if you're a long-term in investor because you see like these massive contracts and you see basically where how Palantir is expanding and where it's going so as you can see even in the past like year it's just been consolidating within this 20 to 30 uh, price range for like a long time almost like a year now so um, prepare to to expect some upside uh, especially if if they're if the earnings coming up in uh, next month, in November 11th, if the earnings is really good, you know, expect to see some upside there. Either way, still up up 160% this past year, which is still crazy good. But anyways, that's, again, I just want to emphasize that that was kind of expected in a way of the price boom that happened. A lot of people were going to take profits. If you were doing covered calls, then that kind of sucks for you. If you covered early and then you rolled out your position, you probably should have waited at least at least 30 minutes in or 30 to an hour in is usually what i like to do because that way you get a, a good feel of like where it's heading um, there's usually a lot of volatility like the first 30 minutes to an hour after that it kind of just dies down and then from there you should be able to kind of see like where it's heading it somewhat stabilizes at least during that day anyway so let's take a look at some option data so basically this is the bullish flow for today so pounds here is actually right here like in the top 10 so you can see that it had a total of 49 um, call orders, uh, total premium $4 million compared to it, the bearish flow. You can see pounds here is right here. It only had 20 orders that were bearish, 1.6 million in premium. So if we take a quick look at basically like, like what happened overall in the bullish flow. So if we open that up, I just wanna show you guys the data. So here's the data you can see that um, overall, if you take a quick look at the expiration that's coming up, which is uh, this Friday. So there's some strikes that are 23, 24. So they're, they're pretty much in the money. There's a couple that are 25. And then there's some that are a little bit above that for next week. But overall, the, these are mainly sweeps. So when I start seeing sweep orders, that usually means that uh, these traders are trying to get in as early as possible. It's, it's usually uh, they expect to to see at least um, a a short term price movement. So uh, when I see all these sweeps, I and especially with the expiration coming up, I feel like there might be like um, a huge upside c coming. But again, that's that's just like um, you can take that as an indicator. It's it's, it's not like 100% true. It, but you know i just wanted to showcase that, that there's a lot of sweeps and they're all within the expiration that's coming up and they're all within the money so now we take a look at the the bearish uh puts that came in um there are not that many sweeps 
there are a couple block orders here and there, a couple split orders, and some of them are further out expiration, 2022 and so on, in November. So overall, they're mostly within the money as well. So I don't really foresee that much more downside, at least just by looking at the option data. And then also just looking at the dark pools that came in, there was only one order that came in uh, for pound here in dark pool data. And it's it's it was basically uh, almost 2 million shares. That's what it seems like, a premium of 43.9 million. And it looks like they basically sold around 24.80. So maybe they took advantage of like the upside in the, in the morning and then they basically sold in the morning and that's what caused it to start going down. And then once it kind of settled down there, then that's where the option to option traders started coming in and then buying those calls so if we take a look at some quick technical analysis uh we're still sitting right here at this 23 23.55 range so it's it's still down here at this area it's still underneath all the moving averages it did make an attempt to go above the 150 day moving average but then it got rejected it just came back down here so it's still um sitting like right underneath those averages and it's if you look at the short term data it's not looking too hot but the one thing that is looking good is the rsi is pretty low it's getting very close to the oversold range and then usually when, once it starts touching this range over here it starts picking back up so you can see that how like once once it touches this range it starts an upward trend so we'll see if that plays out again anyway so overall the market has been pretty shaky lately especially within the tech sector the only thing that's really going up right now is crypto especially uh bitcoin and shiba inu um so i've i have made some videos about that within my channel so make sure you check out those videos if you like this video make sure you hit the like button uh feel free feel free to subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll see you guys in the next video